everybody. It's Lisa Murray here. How about Sweet Life? I hope you guys are having a sweet day. Father Andrew and I are hanging out again, doing another Sweet Life in Christ. And today we're talking about the, the scriptures. The Holy Scriptures, yeah. yes. Uh, AKA the Bible. Right. <laughs> so we all think, of, you know, the Bible's a big book, right? We all think it's a big book. And it, and really, it's, a, yes, it is. It's all in a book. Form, yeah. But it's not one book. It's a collection of books inside this, this, this binding that we put together, we as the church, right. put together and decide these are the books that tells the story of God in our world. So, and it's broken up, as we know, into three parts, depending on who, which, which, uh, which uh, church you belong in. Right. Um, you know, of course, the Old Testament is the, 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 um, the book under the Old Covenant. The New Testament is the book under the New Covenant, or the books under the New Covenant. The Pentateuch are the books that Moses wrote. Yeah. So, and then you have the Apocrypha, which is which is books written by people of the Old Covenant, but um, um, you know we still find useful. So, what do we mean by these books? Why 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 are they so important? So, we how we view these 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 books. So, in the Old Testament, in Old the Old Testament, you have books that were inspired by the Holy, written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Right. Um, that tells um, or shows God at work in the world around. And that really is, and and, and, and and shows how God is in relationship with the, with the people. And so that's, you know, the Pentateuch was a lot about the foundations in the beginning, that how, how God worked to get the people out, where, you know, the laws, where, where, where the law came in. And then you had the, the prophets who told about God, you know, who spread God's messages in the world and wrote it down. And so all these people were, were some, that wrote these different books were inspired by the Holy Spirit. And so that's why we we call them, you know, in God's word, because God, the Holy Spirit gave them the words to say. Right. And so the Old Testament again is is showing the purpose of that was to show God at work in the world around us and history and nature, uh, and the history of God's people. That's there's a lot of history in that book. And then the New Covenant again, inspired inspired by uh, the right. Holy Spirit. Um, the the the, uh, the 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 people who wrote it were you know and, but they were writing to show um, the teachings of Christ mm -hmm. and and to to prepare the people for the good news of the kingdom of God and 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 to proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God and so that that those in the New Testament doesn't overtake the Old Testament the New Testament it just it just it's, it's, it's very much like the continuation between yeah. Exodus and yes. Samuel and Kings and Chronicle, all it's a storyline. It's a timeline of humanity. It's a timeline of God's people. It's a Israelites. It's mm -hmm. a, a, the Jews. It's a timeline of how we have come together between the Gentiles and the Jews in the New Testament. Yeah. It's a continuation of the building of the church. Yes. Yeah. And how God is spreading the gospel throughout all nations in preparation for the consummation. Yeah. And you know, again, and it also shows us how we to live as in, in community with one another, just like Moses did with the Ten Commandments. This, like the the prophets did. Hey, this the prophet spoke. This is how you live. And you know, that's a lot of what Paul and Peter were writing in their letters were addressing the church. So all those letters, the epistles, they were they were they were written to specific churches yes. that were doing that were just messing up or getting off track a little bit. And they're trying to bring them back. And so, again, just like the prophets, there these are how we live in community, live as a church, but also how we build our church. And it's also in terms of, for those of you who are studying the Bible, or will, um, I hope all of you will, I've encouraged each one of you <laughs> on the other show I do called Sweet Scoop to absolutely read each book in its totality. Not read a scripture here and a scripture there. Go to church, obviously, but you need to sit down and do your due diligence as a Christian to read the whole book. And understand what that book is doing and honestly God reveals himself as as Yahweh God reveals himself mm -hmm. as the the victorious you know uh, head of all the yeah. armies and helping the Israelites uh -huh. get to and stay in and acquire the the tribal inheritances in the promised land and lose them and gain them and lose them and gain them and lose them and gain them but you see a pattern of God creating humanity being disappointed in humanity with the fall, creating a situation where man, or he didn't create it, man falls further, brings a flood, tries to rectify, sees more sin, calls the people, yeah. tries to rectify, 
deals with their humanity. And his last in the new covenant was, yeah. okay, I got to come down here myself. Yeah. I got to like get here, be one of you guys, figure out what the devil you're doing and figure it out mm -hmm. and then die so that you can be saved and be given salvation. And that's the humanity timeline, but you don't get it if you stay in the old or only stay in the new. Yeah. You yeah. got to go from wrong. the beginning to the end yeah. and you've got to understand each book as it progressively shows you the timeline of humanity yeah. and God stays consistent throughout yeah. all of the Bible. Yeah. It's the same God that was the creator oh, yeah. of the heavens and the earth. It's the same God that brought Jesus Christ to earth. It's the same God that sits at the throne. Mm -hmm. It's the same God that will do the consummation yeah. and the final yeah. bringing of the heavens and the earth yeah. to, to the new the new kingdom. Yeah. So it's, it's a whole book that needs to be studied, all of it. Because oh, a yeah. lot of my friends, before I went to seminary, a lot of my Christian friends, Spent a lot of time in the new. Oh yeah, there's a lot. Of I got a lot there. of Jewish friends. Spent a lot of time in the old. Mm -hmm. They don't want tippy toe into the new. <laughs> yeah. And I'm trying to get my Jewish friends to tippy toe. This is what my goal has been through seminary. I've been t talking to my Jewish friends and saying, "Can you please just tippy toe into the new?" And talking to my Christian friends and saying, "Could you please just go back and tippy toe into the old?" Yeah. Because there's too much to be learned and so yeah. much to be missed if you don't do it yeah. all. Yeah, and that's yeah. you know talking reading the that's important. That kind of brings me to a point I want, wanted to make during this is trying to interpret and read the scriptures. How do we read them? How do we understand them? Because again, like we said, you know they they are telling a story. They really are. They're they're helping us understand God's relationship with them. But they're also all all these books are written to a specific time and context. Paul's letters were written to a specific church right. in the Middle East. It's not necessarily where we are today. Right. The the prophets in the Old Testament were talking to a people who were then, you know. So how do we, how can we, because they're still important for us today, and that brings us to the hermeneutical circle, how we can understand Scripture instead of just reading it. Well, this is what it says, you know. But what's well, the name so behind it? In seminary, we, we've been learning that world is the world that it was written in. Mm -hmm. For or the above world behind it. It. Yeah, in their behind world it. is the world that it was written to help address. Yeah. The Israelites primarily a lot of it, um, especially during what I've been doing, yeah. which is the histories right now. I'm looking into it, but the Christian application. Yeah. So that is, so is there's key. yeah. So there's three worlds when we're talking about this text and reading and understanding scripture. Uh, there's the world behind the text. That's what you said. What was the context? What what was the historical situation? The setting? What was going on? behind the text what was what was what was this context that we need to put ourselves in to understand what in the world was happening the world in front of the text our world of the text our world of the text is what does it say what is actually said on the text right and then world in front of the text what is that saying to us how are we going, going to apply this to our lives and so we can't just look at the words itself because then we're not missing what's going on behind it. and i think that's where a lot of people use bible and use scripture to 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 make a point. Yeah, they're getting it wrong because they're they they're distorting all, yeah. the the message. Yeah, they're not understanding the message behind it and where we are today. How does that translate to our lives today? And we're able to do read it though, and those all three of those in unison, not one like I'm going to see what the scripture says about me. This obviously this is what it meant. Well, we're completely missing the point on what why why the scripture is necessary right. in the first place. When we can get all three of those together, then we're better able to understand what God is doing mm -hmm. through Scripture, because that really is what Scripture is. It's 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 God's living and body. I mean, He still talks to us through Scripture. He still works through Scripture, um, and and that the Scripture is when we understand the Bible. That's what has carried the church. When we follow what God in Scriptures through the the uh, inspiration of the Holy Spirit, we're able to do what God's calling us to do. Mm -hmm. And it starts in the scripture mm -hmm. and understanding it. Mm -hmm. I really wanted to talk real quick about the Apocrypha, though, because oh, we kind of missed that one. That yeah, so the Apocrypha, you know, I always get the question, what in the world is the Apocrypha? Well, he's gotten that one from me Exactly. As well. So the Apocrypha is a collection of additional books that are important. We don't necessarily think, although some churches do believe that this was inspired by the Holy Spirit. Some think, no, they're just written by people under the Holy Spirit, through you know, in the church, Old Covenant. So, what the Episcopal Church says, this is our, our explanation. The Apocrypha is a collection of additional books written by people of the Old Covenant and used in a Christian church. 
So we still think they're important. We'll still read them, but we don't necessarily believe that they were inspired by the Holy Spirit in the same way that the Old Testament and New Testament. Gotcha. gotcha. And that's why a lot of them put them in the middle. Some put them at the end. Some put them in a separate thing. I like them right in the middle because it's that kind of a, a bridge, if you will. But uh, the, the but you know a lot of people think well the Apocrypha is not important. And yes, it still is because it, it still tells the story. And I have to say that and that, you know I did a tangent, which I often do. I usually go down a rabbit hole just to <laughs> tell I am. I have a four point oh guys, and y'all are not surprised. Those that watch me, you're not surprised at all. Those that know me, because that's how I've always been in school is straight A's, but. When I saw something happening with the revelation, mm -hmm. I was like, I got to go down here and stop, and I got to read yeah. the whole book of Enoch. And yeah. I remember calling and texting you, and we were talking about yeah. it, and it was like, this book didn't make it to the Bible. Why is this book not in the Bible? <laughs> and it's in the Apocrypha, yeah. and it's really a part of a whole uh, ap apoc apocalyptic yeah. writings that are similar to Revelation. Yeah. And it's got a lot of things in it that you can glean from it exactly that'll help you understand yeah. revelation that's, that's the and thing about that's the, the way i've taken it it's yeah. like this is my supplemental reading exactly not inspired by the holy spirit definitely valuable exactly and it still tells a story the Bible. It. yeah it's not yeah it's technically but it's not you know the same as the old testament new testament right but it still tells that story of right. god and his people right the relationship that these people at that time had with God and what and, and our their ongoing relationship yeah. with God and their and working all that out and it's still important to our lives as Christians to understand all of that all yeah. of these the people all, because that's part of our history too and to tap into that and say this is how we too can be in relationship with I just God. don't think that it's I mean like and I've talked to some of my other fellow seminarians it, it, there's not too much you can read when it's related to the Bible. You you can go down as many rabbit holes oh, yeah. as you want to, and read a new same thing that you may have read multiple times and find something new because that's how the scripture works. Because I, I mean, I read things over and over well, again. Well, it's like and me like, with Samuel. Wait, I never noticed that. Right, yeah. it's like me with Samuel. I was telling Father before yeah. we started. I was like, okay, we're doing Samuel, and in First Samuel it says that David brought back two hundred foreskins <laughs> to Saul to get his bride, his daughter. And then in Second Samuel, it mentions it was a hundred, and it's like I never noticed that there was a discrepancy before in that. But you see things, you see things, and if you read it and reread it and yeah. reread it, it's why you can never exhaust it. It's yeah. just a constant. It's, it's a living document. Yeah, it continues to move. It continues to um, open, uh, awaken us, and that's why I love my favorite collect in Episcopal Church is, you know, about that. Help us to read. Uh, Help us to read. Actually, I'm gonna look for. Help us to read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them. It's about our scriptures. Um, if you just give me a second. Absolutely. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. That really is like that <laughs> tells us everything we, we need to know yeah, about scripture. Scripture. It's like it's not just reading it. It's not that's not it's not just reading it, but it's also learning it, marking it, marking letting it, it digest. And when you do that, then we're able at last time I said, where do we see Christ in the scripture? Then we're able to fully embrace Christ in the world around in the scriptures and, and God in us and embrace that relationship we have when we're able to just dive in the scripture. Yep. It's a lifetime of learning, I'm yeah, telling you. It is. I should have started it a lot longer, <laughs> a lot sooner, a lot sooner than in terms of the digging deep part. Because yeah. it's, I sometimes it feels a little overwhelming, especially with yeah. with these classes being seven weeks long each. It's it's a lot trying to study the scripture and understand everything you're supposed to get. It's a it's a lot, but uh, but it's been absolutely fantastic. So yeah. anyway. Well, I hope you guys have found some value in this. If you did, do me a favor, like and share. Don't forget to ring that bell for us. And we will see you next time on another Sweet Life in Christ. Take care. Bye.